Hey guys, today we're going to set up a Zcash full node and wallet. Um, so basically we're going to be running a Zcash D and Zcash CLI. This is going to be from the command line. Um, there's another wallet, I think it's called Zec Wallet or whatever, that uh, comes with a GUI and also includes a built-in full node. And then there are, there are also um, light wallets and there, there are wallets for other platforms like Android, Windows, iOS and whatever else. But for this, we're going to be running a full node um, from the command line um, on Ubuntu Linux. Now, they recommend using Ubuntu Linux. Um, your mileage may vary with other distros. It'll probably work fine. But this is what they support. Um, <clears throat> anyways, we're running this on... Um, so we, we actually tested this previously on Ubuntu Server 20.04. Now we're, we're installing it on Ubuntu Desktop 20.04. So, um, yeah warning keep your private key private etc etc if you want access to this document on the the right side here just check the link in the description and um also most of this is basically taken from the official documentation um actually this was taken from two separate pages showing you how to build it and how to actually like um how to actually launch your wallet and stuff but but there's not a whole lot here it's not that complicated but this is taken from two documentation pages from the official Zcash site showing you how to build it and set it up. I put them all in one document and put them on this page with my own notes about it. That's essentially all you're seeing here, but link in the description to this document and you see down here the references section. Both of these links are where I found all of this information. You can click on these links too. So check the link in the description to get this to this page and check these links for the official Zcash site. Um, actually, this is readthedocs.io but that was linked to from the Z official Zcash site. Any case, um, first thing we want to do is a sudo apt update. Now, I just ran this a minute ago or a few minutes back to, you know, previous to installing a, a uh, Chia wallet. And now we're going to go right ahead and uh, we're, we're, we're going to do this for our Zcash wallet. All right, so yeah, that went pretty quick. Um, now we're gonna install some prerequisites, including the build essentials, which will give us like GCC and all our all our build tools for you know anything development related. Anytime you want to build something, you're generally gonna install that stuff, and there are a bunch of other tools in here like Python and stuff like that. So we're gonna install the prerequisites, big list of prerequisites before we actually start, before we actually clone Zcash and start building it. So. I'm going to paste this in here, and we're going to watch this install. Um, hopefully this doesn't take too, too long, 157 megs, it's not that bad. Yeah. And there we go. So yeah, so that wasn't too, too bad. So let's see here. Um, all right, so let's try, uh, let's try bringing this down from GitHub. So git clone Zcash, official Zcash GitHub. And there we go, we, we've got Zcash. So we, we can CD into the directory and we're going to check out this specific version because the documentation told us to. And we are now going to run this fetch param script. Alright, so now that we've run that, we will uh, we will run the clean script. So I forget how long this takes, but let's give it a shot. All right, so that was really quick. All right, next is to run Z, zcutil build.sh. So um, yeah, this should actually build it. And it specifies, I believe this is the number of processors. And it could cause issues on systems like I think Mac OS where this variable doesn't exist. Um, supposedly, but it works just fine in the environment it's initially tested for, which was Ubuntu. So let's run this. 
so ap apparently in other environments, maybe you could specify, I believe that's supposed to be your number of cores, but I, I believe you can specify that manually rather than using a variable if you're in another environment. So let's uh, let this run for a while and um, let's just let this build. Um, it should take a little while, but let's see. I might speed this up with uh, video editing. All right, so there we go. Looks like we actually finished building. That, that took a, a pretty good while. Um, I probably should have timed it, but in any case, so uh, we, we have got it running now. Now, um, a couple of things you want to do before actually starting up Zcash D is to create a, a hidden directory called Zcash in your home directory. Um, so let's see here, paste this in. There you go. That's different from the current directory called Zcash. We're creating a new directory called dot Zcash. So it'll be hidden. Um, it'll have like the configuration and stuff in it. And we are also going to want to touch a config file in there. Now this config file has to exist, but you don't have to actually have anything in it. If it's empty, it'll just pick the defaults, which is fine for now. Um, so uh, yeah, it's fine to pick, pick the defaults, but the file has to actually exist. Now, from within this Zcash directory, we're, we're going to go into, we're going to call source Zcash D to start up the Zcash D daemon, right? And there we go. There is Zcash up and running. Now, this will take a minute. Um, the screen does refresh, but if you hit enter while this, or, or anything while this is uh, running, it'll sort of mess it up a little bit, interestingly. Um, you're supposed to be able to hit control C to exit if you want. Um, so it's not showing any transactions yet, but it should start showing some in a little bit. Um, <clears throat> so the first thing it's going to do is download the. Uh, it, it's it's going to download the blockchain, <clears throat> and once that's fully downloaded, um, all right. So here we go. It's finally showing us some stats. So it's been uh, you know about forty, a little bit shy of forty seconds when it starts showing you stats, I guess. But it's downloading blocks, um, you know, parts of the blockchain. It'll show you how how far along it is. It's zero percent now. It tells you when like the next uh, uh, overwinter, so overwinter at block height, you know, whatever in, in around uh, six or one days. So I guess that's the next upgrade. Um, we have one connection open at the moment, and it shows me the net network solution rate. So I guess our hash rate or whatever. Um, and it looks like. I'm validating transactions. So since starting this node, you know, over a minute ago, you validated thousands of transactions. So that that's that's great and all. And um, looks like we have a good long ways to go before we can uh, before we're done downloading the blockchain. We, we've got like let, let's see here, one and a half million, almost one and a half million, um, and we we've only gone as far as. Uh, yeah, not, not even 3,000. Okay, so this is, this is gonna take a little while, but um, not too, too crazy bad. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's, that's about, yeah, that, that's not too bad. So I'm a, once, this, once this is done, we're gonna come back once this is done and actually, you know, quarry things and stuff. But um, there, there are some command line commands you can run. Once this daemon is up and running, you'll be able to run these command line commands. Um, I'm gonna give them a shot now, but uh, once it's, it, it should also generate a wallet for you. So let's open another terminal here and uh, let's just take a look. So CD to Zcash, right? And uh, so there will be actually in the, in this hidden directory that we created, it's going to create a wallet.dat. So that wallet.dat is going to have your, um, it's gonna have your private keys and everything. Um, I'm not gonna cat that out right now um, cause I don't wanna have to edit this video for, I don't, I don't wanna have to like censor it out and I don't wanna have to create a new wallet if I don't have to just to show the contents of that file. But um, <clears throat> it has uh, apparently the private keys and transaction information for the embedded wallet. I'd like to actually use this wallet um, for, for my own actual use. So, um, you know, 
the, it's just not a whole lot to show anyone, so I'm just going to not look at that file for now. Um, I may end up having to do that later. Um, what else? And yeah, that may come up when I show you how to like back up your wallet and stuff later on. So, or I may just create a new instance for that. We'll see. Um, I'd like to actually see if I can import like the whole blockchain so I can speed up this process of creating nodes. But um, what else are we going to talk about? So, so yeah, the wallet.dat is where your, you know, your private keys are. So don't show anyone those or they'll have control over your wallet and be able to spend your money. Um, so let's jump back here into the Zcash directory rather than the dot Zcash. And from here we can say source, um, let's say Zcash uh, CLI uh, get info. Now it looks like we can run some info. Um, so we can run some commands while it's still downloading, um, you know, while it's still downloading the uh, blockchain. Uh, probably we're gonna get more information once it actually is downloaded. And uh, I can imagine this is relatively limited. Um, let's try get wallet info. Get wallet info. Okay, so th there's my wallet info. I may just delete this wallet and, uh, you know, while I'm at it, So, uh, whoops. All right, this is what my wallet looks like. I guess, I guess this just holds the data to it and you would have to, imp I guess the dot dat file, that makes sense. So you would have to, you would import this into, uh, you know, another tool. So apparently not a text file at all, but supposedly that contains my, I guess that's worth knowing but supposedly that contains my private key and everything. Um, yeah, so for, I'm gonna create a whole new wallet before I actually transfer any money into this or, or, or do anything like that. Um, Zcash, all right, so let's jump over here and let's try some more commands. Um, so get wallet info, it's gonna tell me, all right, I guess the version, the balance, unconfirmed balance, it's immature, shield balance, um, transactions, key pool, key pool size, uh, pay transfer fee, and seed FP. I'm not off the top of my head 100% sure what that is, but it's probably something that I should have private. Anyways, um, what, what else can we do? We could say like get balance. It's gonna probably say zero. And it, it does, and it will continue to say that even after the blockchain's updated. So that's all I really wanted to cover. I will probably cover um, you know, more CLI commands in the future, but I, th I think that's enough to cover for this video. This is how you set up the full node. Um, so I, I think that that's about all I really wanted to cover for this. Um, this. So this is the full node. This is, I basically set it up. We just wait for the blockchain to download. We're at 0% now. Um, before I can you know do anything real interesting, like actually sending money, I'm gonna need to this is going to need to be uh, updated, but in any case, for now, I think that's 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 mostly everything we wanted to cover for this video. So stay tuned for the next video. You might want to hit that subscribe button, um, hit the little bell icon so you get notified when we do come out with new videos. Um, we have a lot of great stuff coming up, so you're you're not going to want to miss that. Um, you might want to leave a comment down below if you know something I don't know, or any comments, questions, criticisms, anything you want to say just leave a comment down below. Um, hopefully you found this video interesting or informative. Um, I know this is just a really basic video on how to like build and get a full node wallet running for Zcash. It's, it's pretty simple and basic, but um, but we, we, we have a lot more stuff c coming up and we're gonna try to cover, you know, different common questions people ask and, and more advanced use cases. We're gonna cover other, other um, cryptocurrencies too. So hopefully you enjoyed the video. Um, as always, thanks for watching and we will see you guys next time.